One of my biggest insecurities as a child was the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? I hated it. It made me feel like uh, I had to commit to, to something for the rest of my life. And so like many of you, uh, this question came back to haunt me in my senior year of high school when I was applying to colleges. So I decided for one of my essays to be very honest. And I wrote about the tragic life cycle of a cell. You see, a cell is programmed to differentiate in a certain way, specialize in a certain function, um, and do that for the rest of its life. Uh, the coincidence is that three years later, my undergrad uh, research would be about how cells differentiate and specialize in the brain of fruit flies. But for the essay itself, well, the tragic reality is I got rejected from all six schools I sent it to. Um, when I went to college, I found out about research. I have been doing research for the past six years. I worked so far in three different labs uh, in Abu Dhabi, New York, and Oxford. And today I'd like to tell you about three things that each of my professors told me about how to do research that ended up teaching me a lot about how to do life. So the first one is get your hands dirty. Um, when I was choosing uh, my undergrad uh, thesis, I told my professor that I really enjoyed analyzing the data, but I didn't want to do any of the lab work, which in that case was dissecting flies and looking at their brain under the microscope. Um, and he said to me, no, you need to get your hands dirty. You need to understand how the data you're analyzing is generated. And so doing uh, that project uh, taught me that you actually spend more time, most of your time in research, figuring out the right question to ask, the right way to look at a problem instead of, you know, looking for an answer. And the way you do that is by getting your hands dirty. You do experiments, uh, you uh, get more data, and you refine your understanding of the problem. So uh, finding the question is not the starting point of any research project. It's actually the point of doing a research project. So I realized it's actually not to find your passion to then live your life. It's start with something small that's interesting to you and spend your life gaining your experiences to have more data and readjust your interests and what you care for. Number two, why not? This one gave me a hard time at the start uh, because I first understood it as you know, detach yourself from tradition. Don't limit yourself to what people have done before. But if you think more about it, it's also about trend. It's about not limiting yourself to what people are doing right now. And trend is complicated more than tradition because it's always presented in a positive light because it's happening at the present moment. And so you need, it takes more effort to take a step back and think about whether what other people are doing makes sense for you. Um, last year, I was invited with a group of other female students to speak with a panel of uh, what were called powerful women. Uh, they were politicians, CEOs of corporations and nonprofits. And they talked to us about their careers, the difficulties they faced and encouraged us to uh, be ambitious and uh, follow our dreams. But then uh, a female student said something. She said, to me, the most powerful woman is my grandmother, who um, is a stay-at-home mom who raised five children in wartime um, and whose grandchildren are all seeking PhDs right now. You see, those women saw ambition through the lens of their work. That student saw ambition through the impact her grandmother had on her family. And so in the spirit of why not, think about what you personally value in your life 
and make your own decisions about what you think an ambitious life looks like for you. Now here's the last one. Good routine is what 90% of any successful research career is. One of the misconceptions about research out there is that it's this endless process of looking for an answer until someday, by magic, the stars align and you reach a breakthrough. What's not talked about is that in the lead up to that breakthrough is just simple routine work and consistent structure. There's actually a lot of structure in the research process. Uh, first of all, it's limited in time. You know, you need to deliver by uh, two years, five years, 10 years, whatever, like any job. Uh, but within that, you also have checkpoints. For example, you present your research at a conference or you publish a paper about the results you found so far. And that's actually quite helpful because it helps you to take a step, it forces you to take a step back um, and look at the bigger picture of your problem and your project and figure out what your next step should be. Now, imagine if you could do that for your personal life, where every, every year you sit down and say, okay, where am I at? What am I doing well? What am I struggling with? What do I want to change for the next five years? Unfortunately for me, that's the kind of exercise I only do once I have to um, write an application essay and very reluctantly. So here's my proposal to you. Consider your life a research project. Start with something that's interesting to you, that you care about, and then get more data by having more experiences, talking to people. And when faced with new data, be comfortable with reevaluating your assumptions and changing your plans about how you want to play the game. 